This video will demonstrate a predictable and reliable method of placing a composite and wire splint to manage traumatic dental injuries. On the screen, you can see some instruments that you may use to undertake this procedure. A splint is a passive device that immobilizes a traumatized permanent tooth in the correct anatomical position, preventing further trauma and allowing healing. Splints can be formed in a variety of ways using a number of different materials, and by the nature of the injury. Full details of the management of dental trauma will be covered in your classes and tutorials. For this practical, we will make a flexible splint. Wire will be shaped and secured with composite resin. The completed splint should be passive, conforming to the dental arch curvature, and made of a suitable material. It should be flexible, where the traumatized tooth is affixed to one abutment tooth on either side. This exact design will of course depend on the injury. The splint should be roughly in the incisal third of the tooth and far away from the gingiva. You should have no materials overlying the gingiva and no unnecessary plaque traps or overhangs associated with the composite. There should be no sharp edges and also the ends of the wire should be firmly embedded within the composite. Here we can see that the upper right central incisor has been traumatized. The end result of this traumatic dental injury has been that the tooth has become loosened. If you are using wire from a reel, this will need to be cut. For all parts of this procedure and any wire cutting, it is important that the wire is cut safely. When placing the splint, there are two different methods that we will explore to demonstrate how to correctly size and shape the wire required. In the first method, we have created a safety handle where we have cut a larger piece of wire and bent it in such a way that we have an approximate length of wire plus a large safety handle which we can hold and compare to the teeth. We can make modifications to this wire length when comparing it to the teeth to make sure that we have the appropriate size that we intend to splint the teeth with. Holding the safety handle, position the wire in the mouth with one end over the midpoint of the right lateral incisor. Adjust the splint length until the end points will lie at the middle of the adjacent abutment teeth. Curve the wire to match the curvature of the maxillary arch. The splint should lie passively over the teeth. Pre-accident photographs may help decide the exact shape of the splint. We now test the splint against the teeth, holding it with a safety handle. We now safely cut the wire at the junction between the safety handle and the splint, holding both parts at the cut. Okay, so these are the kind of instruments that you may have in your practice. You may have standard wire cutters like these, or you may have this land cutters like these that have an end like that. If you're using these, I'll put this like this. No, that wire goes flying, it's not safe. Bad idea. If you are to use these, what you should do is hold your wire like this. Can you see that? And by holding your wire like this, if you cut your wire, like that, you have safely cut your wire. Alternatively, if you are to use these, you can cut your wire like that. And again, a bit of wire is caught. The safety handle part of the splint will be disposed of in the sharps bin and for the remainder of the procedure, the splint will need to be held in a locking instrument. The alternative method we could have used would have been to pre-cut the wire to our estimated length, compare it against the teeth, 
haven't held it in the locking instrument from the beginning. The airway can also be protected at this time with gauze. We will now make a final comparison of the splint affixed by the locking instrument against the dentition to confirm that it is the desired length and shape. We are now ready to place the splint. Isolate the teeth with a cotton wool roll and dry the teeth. Ensure that the cotton wool rolls are controlled when in the oral cavity. Etch and bond the labial surface where the splint is to be secured. Take care to only etch and bond the minimum amount of labial tooth surface to effectively affix the splint. The exact details of this will depend on the bonding system you are using and we would ask you to refer to the manufacturer's guidelines for determining these times. Secure the splint correctly incisor gingivally by placing small amounts of composite onto the labial surface of the abutment teeth. Start with the mesial and distal ends. By affixing the splint first to the abutment teeth, this will allow us to securely reposition and confirm accurate positioning of the traumatized tooth before finally fixing it to the splint. With gentle pressure, push the wire into the composite and adjust the composite as necessary with a flat plastic or other shaping instrument. With firm pressure, ensure the traumatized tooth is manipulated to the desired pre-injury position. It is imperative that a constant balanced pressure is maintained at this point to ensure that the tooth remains in this position. Quickly assess arch form at this point. Now we apply composite to the traumatized upper right central incisor and again like cure to secure the wire effectively splinting the traumatized tooth. Quickly assess the tooth once more to ensure that it is in the desired position. At this point, remove any gauze from the patient's mouth 
and ask them to close their teeth together. Ask them if their bite feels normal. Check the occlusion and also ask the patient to view the tooth in the mirror to ensure they are happy with the position. Secure the splint by placing composite superficially over the wire and light cure this. It will help with removal if the composite is shaped in a way that is slightly raised on the labial surface. Using a distinct color that is much darker than the tooth surface or much lighter than the tooth surface is also a good idea. This will help when removing any residual composite at the splint removal procedures, which will be covered in another video. Once more, the completed splint should be passive, conforming to the dental arch curvature and made of a suitable material. It should be flexible, where the traumatized tooth is affixed to one abutment tooth on either side. This exact design will of course depend on the injury. The splint should be roughly in the incisal third of the tooth and far away from the gingiva. You should have no materials overlying the gingiva and no unnecessary plaque traps or overhangs associated with the composite. There should be no sharp edges and also the ends of the wire should be firmly embedded within the composite. 